<laughs> But I'm here. So the thing is,、uh, I'm going to a wedding tomorrow, which、mm. is Saturday.、Uh, and it's my godbrother's, this handsome fella's wedding.、Huh. This is going to be my wedding gift. It's, it's, it's the two of them together. I, I already did. Aww. So, you know,、uh, I need to finish. Like, desperately. <laughs> Hence, you guys are gonna watch me draw <laughs> while we talk about movies, which is fun. That is fun. It is fun. So, you know, that's the deal. But、uh, I will try to come back by the end. <laughs> I, on the other hand, have been having a mare with Zoom who has now decided that、um, my camera doesn't want to zoom in anymore,、oh, uh, yes. which means that my、uh, green screen is not the right size for my background. <laughs> So, you're getting my bedroom today. Mine is sort of the clothes that are currently dumped in the corner. <laughs> was... I mean, you know, like five minutes ago, it didn't look like this. So, you did a good job.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, this, this is very much the、um, shove everything under the sofa style of cleaning. Yeah, I mean, it works. There's,、um, there's a lot of stuff. This is what framing, why framing is important. Because there is. <laughs> There's so much stuff you can't currently see. That's true. That means that this place is still a nightmare of <laughs> not clean. <laughs> It's okay.、Uh, do you want to introduce our wonderful Parker? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Welcome to all the films we judged before. I'm Katie. That is the incredibly artistic Lily K. Oh, oh. Get thank it? You. Thank you. Because she's doing art.、Oh, well done. Well done.、Mm-hmm. Uh, what, a, what, a, what a good way. <laughs> <laughs> I am not Troy Baker, I am Troy Faker. And yes, today I am doing art while talking about movies, which is.、Before. I'm going to try and suppress the bad mood that not having my <laughs> <laughs> green screen work、uh, apparently set off in me. It、yes. was one of those dormant things where I was like, not feeling too great. And then suddenly something went wrong and I went a bit postal. It's fine. It's fine. It was a bit scary. I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> I saw Pennywise for a second. <laughs> oh, it's just... But it's all good. It happens. We I understand. It. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things that it's like tech stuff not working is one of those things that will drive me insane. <laughs> Fair. Because、uh, it's when shit should just work and it, it just stopped working for, for apparently no reason. Oh, I mean. You know, it's like it's the same with my microphone.、Mm. Uh, I used to have feedback on this thing, so I could hear myself back as well.、Uh, you know, I, I could hear you, and then I could hear myself back, but it wasn't like annoying, like it was delayed or anything. It was,、mm-hmm. it was nice and clear. And,、uh, you know, I like that. And then suddenly one day it just disappeared. It was just like, done, bye, goodbye. I, you know, I'm not going to work for you anymore. And we tried everything. Like, you know, we tried to figure There out. There were many attempts, I remember. Yep. <laughs> And then it just, it just doesn't work anymore. So I understand, Katie. It's fine. <laughs> I technically have that ability on my microphone as well. But for some reason, at some point, I did something to the settings. Yes. That meant that it's so quiet. I have to turn everything up so loudly on my mixer in order to be able to hear it in my headphones. That,、um, but then it means that everything from that you know, comes in to、mm. the microphone and into the computer is super loud.、Yep. So I just had to turn everything down. But now it means that I can't hear anything. If I, so that's why I never have both headphones in because then I can't hear myself properly.、Ah. And then I start talking way too loudly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's fair. That's fair.、Uh, before we get into today's topic, which was going to be a fun one. Uh, and hopefully, it can take away your bad mood a little bit. <laughs>、uh, did you watch anything while we didn't talk?、Um, I haven't watched anything particularly new. It's, it was Friday today. Yes. For people who are watching this on Tuesday, it's Friday today.、Um, but, and Fridays have suddenly become my day where new things come out. Yes.、Um, there will be one less this week because the last episode of Shmigadoon went up, which was lovely.、Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was a pretty good show.、Nice. It was like. I call it a, like a solid six or seven out of ten. It was, it was fun, you know?、Um, and then Ted Lasso comes out on Fridays, and then Brooklyn Nine-Nine just came back.、Um, oh, nice. So I watched the first two episodes of that.、Um, so it's like Fridays have become the day where I watch things because that's when everything seems to come out. <laughs> it's very weird. I, I used to have a whole schedule of stuff that would come out in the week. Yeah. And I know what days that they'd come out, and I'd be like, to the point where in. 
secondary school, I once told a friend that I couldn't come around to her house on Tuesdays because Tuesdays were the days where I watched House and I watched Chuck and I watched Castle. Yeah. <laughs> and that was my evening. And I was like, I needed that time. And she got really not happy with me when I told her that. Yeah. Oh, my God. We are we're the same person. I just... <laughs> You know, just I I had like a proper uh, every time when September rolled around, uh, I called my diary and wrote up all the TV shows I was watching mm. and when they would come out and and there was like a proper plan, like you know, uh, I don't remember particularly, but like Arrow was on Tuesday and then the Flash came out on 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 Wednesday and then uh, there was Supernatural and there was. Uh, other things <laughs> and suddenly yeah. they were like just just it is list. it is completely <laughs> diminished over the past i think five years i think it's, it's been the process of five six years because i remember it was right up until around the time i did my a levels yeah and then i dropped a ton of stuff because i just didn't have the time to catch up with them yeah. and then i just wasn't bothered by catching up with them after that point mm. um it, it became very few things that i actually gave a shit about like finishing yeah um and I don't, I don't think I've ever, there, there are a lot of shows from around that time that I just never watched the end of. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was like, I, ha- I had to drop a few things because, you know, uh, it was around university time and all that stuff. So I was like, yeah, I don't have time for this anymore. Uh, but also because they pissed me off. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Arrow was a big one that pissed me off uh, because I just... Uh, my, uh, I read the comics. It was one of the few cases where I I read the comics, and uh, I really like Katie Cassidy who played Laurel. And uh, you know, in in the comics, uh, Laurel is uh, Oliver's big, 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 big love, and and they are they are always together. And then in the show, they decided to kill her off and have Felicity step in, and I was like, yeah, no, nope, bye. <laughs> yeah, that definitely came from. Uh, Felicity and Oliver was a very big fan favorite thing. Yeah. I, that was definitely like, ah, oh, this is what the people want, sort of thing. Yeah. Um. Uh. But I believe Katie Cassidy ended up. Did she end up going into Legends of Tomorrow? Am I making that up? No, that was. Uh, um... There was a lot of blonde women in the. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was because <laughs> I, I don't watch it. it. They've all kind of. I don't remember them all. <laughs> It was the girl who played her sister, and I, I, I'm sorry, I can't remember uh-huh. her name. Um, well, I know that people have been, because I, I like reading up about what's happening in Legends of Tomorrow, because it's, from what I can tell, one of the most batshit shows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? Good for you guys. I, yes. I, I love that for you. Yes, exactly. Also, they gave Matt Ryan the chance to be Constantine for longer, yes. so it's like, I respect them. Mm, 100%. Uh, if, if, no, it was... Um... Katie Cassidy did show up in, uh, uh, so she came back in Flash as a different mm. version of the Black Canary, uh, and you know it was it was it's uh, God, it got messy. Flash is now just ridiculous to be honest. So I just stopped watching it. I'm I'm really disappointed in it. Like the second Cisco uh, uh, left the show, I was like, yeah, no. Mm-mm. So yeah, I I no longer watch these DC shows because they are just simply not too great. <laughs> anymore to be honest uh superman and louis superman and louis yeah that's, louis. that's yeah, yeah that's the one that's the one uh that that is great so far so i i have to say that's like a, that's like a really good start uh on that show and and titan season three is coming uh out i think today so i have to watch Titans that still. looked always looked really good it's been on my watch list on netflix yeah. but god knows how long at this point but uh, i just never got around to like i got <laughs> I, yeah i think i'm generally at my limit of like superhero stuff because we do live in an age of superheroes it's just superhero stuff all the time yeah. and not a lot of the time we've talked a lot about it on this podcast but, I, yeah. you know, <laughs> there's a certain you know the, 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 you know, one other stuff going on as well <laughs> i mean i mean that's that's completely fair i uh was really looking forward to New Mutants because, you know, it was advertised uh-huh. as a superhero horror uh, film. So I was like, oh, that's like my two favorite things. And uh, I did end up watching it not too long ago uh, on HBO. And uh, I am, first of all, I am very disappointed. <laughs> that movie was delayed, I think, six uh, times. Six times, and yeah. What, and a big part of the reason it was delayed, like, 
some of the earlier times was because it had massive reshoots. Yep. Yep. It shows. You really need to know. <laughs> it shows. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's the kind of movie where you can definitely see the potential. Mm-hmm. Like, it could have been really freaking great. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they just completely messed it up. And, uh, you know, I was like, yeah, no, I, I, I just couldn't get on board with it. Like, I really liked the idea behind it. And I could see how, you know, a story about the the X-Men and the mutants that are in X-Men can turn into a horror film. So I was like, yeah, I'm interested in this. And then they just they just messed it up. So, yeah, it was it was a disappointment. But uh, I did I did what that there was a new movie that came out uh, this week and uh, it's my it's one of my guilty pleasure movies because mm-hmm. it was it was the kissing boot part 3 oh god <laughs> i mean i haven't seen them but i kind of object to them just on a <laughs> like a what's the word <laughs> principle level you know yes i mean it's, it's like it's completely fair uh i just i don't know I just like how silly they are. Like it's it just doesn't make any sense. But you know, I, I can tell that they probably had a really great time shooting these movies. Like that like they are friends. It's it it comes off as that and, and you know, it it just kind of um very dumb like very very dumb movies uh way too complicated to to what it is like you know on on the relationship levels um and uh yeah it's messy and it it has uh <laughs> but i still enjoyed it i i'm not gonna lie i'm just like you know it's it's one of those movies that i just watch if i don't want to think Mm. <laughs> basically and honestly this third part which is the final part so it was the it was the end of the chapter there's literally a six year jump ahead in in the story is is like uh you know it, it came to an end and it was i think it was the weakest out of, out of all three of them <laughs> mm-hmm. but it was it was okay <laughs> for you know for just a let's turn our brain off day it was it was a good fun <laughs> Yeah, it's just one of those things where it's just sort of like one of these movies I can abide by. <laughs> Three of them? <laughs> when you could have been putting money into something so much better. Oh, yes. Yes. Mm. Mm-hmm. We could talk like uh, Netflix, um, Santa Clarita Diet was, you know, my I, I love them. I love Timothy Oliphant and and yeah, we love Tilly, we love yeah, come on. And and then you cancel that, and we have th- three freaking movies from from this from from Kissing Booth. Like seriously, <laughs> I so, there's a there's a like a it's not a gift set. It's not actually gifts. It's just photos, like screenshots yes. on Tumblr that comes up quite a lot. And every time it it cracks me up. And I haven't seen the whole show. I I have. Um, no, I don't think I can talk about that, technically. Um, I've seen a couple of the episodes in season three for certain reasons. Um, okay. I can tell you about it, but just not on the internet. So. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, there's there's a, there's like a photo set of, of like, the the best friend, like, the, the, the yes. daughter's best friend, like, in the shop looking at, like, cleaning supplies. <laughs> and he has this, like, really intense conversation with this, like, I just don't know if I'm doing the right thing and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You know, sometimes it can be really hard. And then at the end, it's like, and she gives him, like, a bottle and goes, this one's really good for cleaning off blood. And he goes, wait, what? You've got blood <laughs> on your shoes. <laughs> and it's just sort of like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, that show was freaking awesome. I loved it, and you know, it it ended on a on a freaking cliffhanger. So I'm I'm not happy uh, with, yeah. with Netflix for for canceling Santa Clarita Diet. Like I love that show so much. Um, also, I I have to watch the Bad Batch because the last episode came out today. Oh uh, yes. And I am ready for the fields. I'm not. I'm I'm really not. Like I. <laughs> I spent the last. I, I mean, you know that we talked about it yesterday. I I, I spent the last couple of days just you know just weeping because uh, all our uh, beta readers for the, for the novel are coming in with the reviews and it, they are just oh. they're very sweet. <laughs> they yeah. are very sweet, and I am like you know it's I I just told Jasper who's one of the beta readers and that um you know it's so nice to see how 
they perceive the characters and the world that I created and, and it, it actually put like a different light on everything for me. Uh, and it actually helps, you know, I, I like I told you as well, like uh, whatever you said to me about the book and, you know, uh, we talked about it while we were editing it, it just uh, helped me to, uh, first of all, I, I am planning now for the second one, which I didn't do for the first one. It's like, uh, this is a little secret, a behind the scenes secret, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, it prompted me to, to make a plan which is very nice. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I quite enjoy it. Uh, and I am now more than uh, excited to, to actually start writing book two. Uh, so yeah, I, I had some good days, but uh, I, I'm not ready to cry on the bad batch. I, I have a <laughs> feeling that I will cry. Like <laughs> It's just, it's there. Uh, but yeah, that's all I want. Did I, oh no, I watched uh, The Swarm which is another Netflix movie, but it's a French one. And mm. uh, I thought that it's it's going to be a lot more horror than drama, uh, which I don't have a problem with dramas. I like dramas, but... Uh, you just, you when you go into something and you're expecting it to be one thing, it can really throw you when it's something, it's something actually more the other thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, I like the idea, and I think it could have been turned into a great horror movie, actually, but... Uh, I think they kind of missed that <laughs> chance uh, with my a lot. Uh, so I'm not saying I was disappointed in it because I, you know, it was still a good watch and and the actors were great and and all that and the and the cinematography was just chef's kiss. Uh, but yeah, it was it was a kind of a like, eh. <laughs> you know, I watched it, but uh, I don't think I will watch it again. To be honest, uh, yeah. That's that's all I watch, so it's not many things because, I, as I said, I am back to work. I have commissions. <laughs> I have things that I didn't finish yesterday. You can see. She's got stuff to do. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> I finished watching. I finished uh, rewatching uh, my the D D thing I've been watching. Fancy nice. high sophomore year, nice. um, and then I watched both of the one shots that they did outside of those ones, and then I oh. kind of went right. I need a break from long form. Mm. Um, D&D actual play content which yeah. I love very dearly but sometimes it, it's a lot of content to watch yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so last night because I was playing a bit of Mass Effect last night and then mm. I was like no I need to, I, I want to just put something on as I go to bed yeah um I was yeah, I didn't want to I wanted to like have something like something to watch yeah um for once so I just put on a couple episodes of Cowboy Bebop again nice. and I was like it was it's it's so funny how quickly that show I watched it like once and then it, it like even watching it the first time it was like this just feels like familiar and comfortable mm -hmm. so now when I go back to it it feels even more familiar and comfortable that I'm like mm -hmm. it's just nice <laughs> it is such a great show like, I, I honestly can't wait to uh, watch the live action version. Like. I'm really excited by what that. Mm -hmm. I, I know anime live action stuff has been pretty much all terrible. I don't know if there has actually been a good one. Oh, I can say a good one. I, I well, really enjoyed one. that. Uh, the Bleach movie they did uh, for Netflix. Oh, okay. I, I think that was like actually like, mm, okay. I, I don't think I knew about that one. So mm -hmm. it was It was pretty good. Because in my head, I'm thinking about, um, obviously, Death Note was apparently just like a huge bust. <laughs> Everybody hated the Death Note movie. I'm not going to lie. I watched that without watching the anime. So I never saw the anime. Right. Um, yeah. But like, <laughs> yeah. it was one of those ones where the anime people watched the anime was like, well, this is garbage. Uh, yeah. And um, I, every time I see pictures from the Full Male Alchemist um, live action movie, I, uh -huh. I want to cry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the wigs are so bad. <laughs> Why did you feel the need to give them the actual anime hair in the show as well? No one knows. It wasn't necessary. No one knows. Ah. It's a mystery. It's but a mystery. I think that this could actually be... It's got the, the concept of the show and the characters and everything have enough, like, it, they're strong enough that you could turn it instantly as long as you really go by what the original material was, yeah. right? Yeah. It's one of those things where it's like, if they go into the show and they start giving everybody like lots of backstory it's kind of like oh you're ruining it a little bit yeah you know yeah because like everybody gets backstory in the show but it's very you get to draw whatever you kind of like out of a lot of it mm -hmm. um there's still so much about all of them that you don't really know you know mm -hmm. bits and the whole, the whole point is the show there's this uh, kind of like going nowhere they're just sort of vibing you know yeah. whatever yeah. happens happens <laughs> um 
I watched that specific episode last night with the um um the the one where he actually is in the swordfish and he goes whatever uh, happens happens oh yes 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 and the uh the the old like nasa rocket rocket and everything yeah yeah yeah. that's like it was a good episode um it is but it's like you've got to capture that spirit and i think the thing that makes me nervous is mm-hmm. the fact that there hasn't been any news about the casting of ed it was like but you have to have ed in there because otherwise it's not yeah. right you've already fucked it yeah i'm sure i'm sure ed's gonna be in there like I- Come on. Come I, on. I imagine. Ugh. Imagine. Oh gosh, so many. <laughs> <laughs> the thing uh, that I found out recently because I knew that um, they have actually got like a like a dog actor who is a corgi to play Ein, oh. but I didn't realize that the, the dog is actually called Ein. Oh, like, the dog is named after Ein. Oh, the show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's like this is perfect. He's so beautiful and cute. Such <laughs> a good boy good that's actually good that's great (laughs) and i think the other thing that is very exciting is um oh god what is their name there's a very important character to do with spike's story um oh god i know wait gren i was like my brain was going gray and it was like no no, it's gren gren Gren. Gren is actually being played by a non-binary person yes and considering gren is kind of plays in this weird space of gender in the show as well yeah it's like holy shit they've actually done it they've yeah. actually cast the non-binary person to play a character that is essentially non-binary but like mm. they never really went into it like because yeah. it was 98 and i don't think there was that kind of um yeah. language was as yeah, well yeah, i mean yeah. it existed it just wasn't as well like known yeah, that kind of thing yeah. so it's like that's very exciting to me mm-hmm and obviously, oh, yeah. John Cho is playing Spike, so, and yes. that just makes that's just the best thing. That that's the best. Like, uh, I I am not gonna lie, I am mostly excited for him. <laughs> it's it was it was John Cho's Spike hair, and everybody freaking out about it. That meant that I watched the show in the first place. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Uh, yeah, it's pretty exciting. The other exciting thing that uh, got announced is uh, the mm-hmm. live action cast for the Last Airbender TV series. Yeah, I didn't want to put any like opinion on it because i haven't watched i watched like a few of the first episodes of the show and then but i don't know maybe oh, at the time i wasn't it. yeah I, I mean i know i should it's just one of those things where i watched the first few episodes and then clearly wasn't in the space to enjoy it as much because i i started it and liked what i saw but it didn't grab me enough to like mm. go back to it um and it's not that's not I, that's just the me thing you know it's not, yeah, that's yeah, not yeah. the show's fault um but i have been told by many people that i should uh should get back Please. onto that but, um <laughs> But it was like, I saw the cast and went, okay, this looks interesting. But also, I haven't seen the show and I don't know enough about it to be able to make any kind of judgment. Well, I can I can say that it's it's a much better casting than we have for the movie version. Like, much yeah. better. Like, I, yeah, it, it, that's, that I picked up and I was like, this looks good. And I liked it. Um, if you look at the Netflix Geeked account, which... It gives me pain to look at a lot of the yeah. times because it uh corporate accounts using like gen z language to seem like relatable make me want to gouge my eyes out yep um it's like it's just, oh jeez. Yep. but the the quotes that they put up uh, on instagram from mm-hmm. the person who seems to be running the thing seems to understand what it is that they're doing yeah so i'm like okay and from an outsider's perspective this looks promising mm-hmm I don't know. Then it you get does. into the whole argument about like why should we be making live action remakes of animated stuff? They should just sort of exist on their own. And I'm like, I, just, I feel, I can't. I just there's a part of me that wants that sort of thing, though. Mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, I, I have this, the, 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 I think it's it's too much of a thing that people could have too much fun like doing fan, fan casting for. Why wouldn't they want to like make it into like yeah. something tangible to look at? Yep. As a, I mean, this is not to bash animation at all, because animation is its own wonderful medium. Oh, uh, yeah. uh, it's very, it's odd. I don't know how to... <laughs> I I think I got you. I think I got you. Uh, I, I honestly don't mind it. Mm. Uh, there are actually a few on my list that I would like to see in live action. Uh, mm. So, you know. I like don't... what? <laughs> 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 well, it's uh, one of my childhood favorites is Inuyasha, and uh, 
I I really want to see that <laughs> in live action, which I I don't think it ever it will ever happen. It was mm. a really long series. It had movies and all that stuff, and and I really enjoyed that story. And uh, you know, I I would have been interested to see how they could translate that into live action. Uh, maybe it will happen at one point, but uh, you know, I don't think so. Uh, mm. And then my all time favorite, which I could never like every time I think I say. Uh, the title right it turns out that I just I don't <laughs> so I will... Folks, we're getting it we're getting a, 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 a first uh, a, like a, a real close-up look of, of how Lily looks for stuff on her phone <laughs> so it's this one Rufin Rito yeah something like that yeah and and um, uh, English title is this one I don't know if you can see it Maybe. us Elfin lied yes okay and that's and, and that's what I say. I felt lied, and then I think that I am saying it right. And then suddenly, uh, someone will say, "You know what is that?" And now it happened at Comic Cons, and I was so frustrated by it. Like, do I am am I saying this? Like, you know, I know it's it's not my first language, but I don't think I am saying it wrong. And then they say Ethan lead, and I'm like, oh, yeah. I mean, I guess it could be a name um, if he. <sighs> I think it. Um, I don't know. I honestly, I, I, I feel like it's Ethelide, but uh, at this point, I am just not sure. So I, I am just afraid <laughs> to say it. I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce this word, and at this point, I'm too afraid to ask. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not scared. I'm not scared. I'm not seeing it. Like uh, last time, I last time. Uh, before the uh, lockdowns, when I went to Comic Con, and the I, before times, yes, and I was looking for the Blu-ray version because I really want to own it on Blu-ray, and I can't find it anywhere. Um, I I went and I literally went. I held up my phone and I was like, "Do you have this?" <laughs> I just couldn't. I was like, "I'm not gonna say it." I just I just feel bad. <laughs> I feel like I am messing it up each those time. <laughs> my three Blu-rays that live upstairs. That one of the two of those is a uh, I've got Cowboy Bebop the movie, and then yes. your the copy of of Train to Busan that Thank you gave Busan. me for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you can see all of my stuff on my there's yeah. backs and backs. They're hanging out on the there top of my. Uh, you can't see the the oh shit pointing is hard you can't see because it's all sort of blown out but that's actually the 10th doctor holding the hand in the jar nice right there nice. which is fun that's there's, nice. my, there's, there's the west wing and mentalist and Aww. My Aww. <laughs> you know who would enjoy this ricky mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> Ricky would enjoy. I just messaged him, by the way. Our friend oh, yeah. Rick Verti. Uh, uh, we love Rick. We, we love Rick, and uh, he was in Station Nineteen, which is mm. a spin-off series for Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I I asked him this question. I didn't get an answer, but he's on set again, and mm. I I feel like that he might become a series regular. Which I would That'd be love. nice for him. I would love that. I for would him. love that for him. Yeah. We are not saying that this has happened. No, no, we are not starting rumors. Or anything like that. I'm just. We don't know assuming. anything. I'm just simply assuming things. It might be. It might be. It would be really nice, you know, to to get the news that he, he became a serious like regular, like after Magicians ended and the Man in the High Castle as well. I want to see him in something again, like where he's he's is the regular face and he's always there. That would be nice. It doesn't matter how many times I know it's called the Man in the High Castle. I will keep calling it in my head the Man in High Castle. <laughs> Because that was how I read it the very first time, and apparently that's the only way that my brain is ever going to read that title ever again. <laughs> that's fine. Because it, it's like you, I hear you say it, and my brain translates it to the man in High Castle. <laughs> so it can't exist in a different form in my it, head. It it's one of those it ones. It's fine. It's okay. Um, um, I gave you a challenge. For you did. This I've episode. sort of been very poor at it. I won't lie to you. <laughs> um, I've I've come up with one really that's and... fine that's fine tell me that one then well you know you should introduce the challenge first oh yes that's <laughs> that's a good idea actually. yeah do that first <laughs> so the challenge was is we played that game with our friends from uh tangent uh the podcast which is chance and Steph. Steph and chance 
go check him out. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, in one of the games, uh, you had to replace one uh, character in the movie and, <laughs> <Muppet>. you know, <laughs> and convince us why, uh, why it would work better. But this time, instead of doing it with Muppets, I said to Katie that let's do it with real actors and mm. uh, let's, you know, have like a, a real swap uh, mm. in whatever movie or TV show you want to do it in. Uh, yeah. So that was the challenge. And I, I cannot wait to hear. Who well, here's my thing. I, I, ha- I know exactly who I'd want to recast in a certain movie, but I don't really know who I'd want to recast them with. So I'd love to oh. hear your opinions on it. Okay. So we can have a chat about it. Okay. So um, I don't know if you know this about me, but Paper Towns is actually one of my favorite books of all time. Oh, um, has been for a, like it was one of the first uh, young adult novels that I read like in I that kind of Paper transitional Towns. period yeah. of my life, and it yeah. just very quickly became one of the first books I also reread. Um, nice. I love it very dearly. The movie mm-hmm. is pretty good. Mm-hmm. It's not terrible. Yeah. It's not perfect either, no, though. No. And the big thing that frustrates me oh, about the movie is the casting of Cara Delevingne as Margot yep. who's entirely wrong for the role <laughs> <laughs> and I remember at the time when John Green was like don't worry she gets it you guys and I'm like she maybe does still wrong no and I her accent was bad and no yep yep yeah I'm sorry Cara but no <laughs> no um I, yeah I agree. Yeah, I just, everything, it, it's like, the thing that really bugged me, though, is those, it, you know, it's these really small details that you pick up from a book. Um, yes. That when the movie doesn't do them, you're like, why? There's no point for you to not do this. And it's uh, her hair for me in that yeah. film. Yeah. Her hair is wrong. Um, um, oh, my copy of the book is on my shelf, which is very annoying. But um, mm. the version of Margot that lives in my head is the version of Margot that I have on the front of the book. Yes. Which um, I've got I've got yellow Margot back back in the day. This was a very big deal because um, <laughs> I've got the hard copy, like one of the first nice. ones. So and she's you know brunette, short hair. So and it's yeah, yeah yes, I don't think she has to look exactly like that Margot, but her hair in yes. that movie is entirely fucking wrong. It's just incorrect, <laughs> and everything about her shape in the movie, she doesn't have the right vibe for me of Margot. I feel like. Margot brings the very much the mystery element to the story yeah. for me. Yeah. And I feel like the movie didn't capture as much as no. I would have liked it to. Because the book, when you're reading it, it really does feel like a mystery novel in places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like the whole point at the end is like, no, this wasn't a fucking mystery. I wasn't leading you to me. I was I'm what have you you've made me into something that I'm not here. Yeah. You know, she's meant to be manic pixie dream girl s because that's the way that quentin views her and she's like no i just wanted to get away i'm not something for you to chase after yeah and i also think that's one of the things that the movie didn't quite Mm -mm. grasp um it it kind of almost threw it away a little bit at the end where he he kind of remade margo into a myth in like the final five minutes and you're like oh my god why (laughs) (laughs) but i would love to recast margo and i just don't really know with who i feel like there is an actor that i can see the face of but i can't remember her name okay. which is really and i don't remember what she's been in oh that's the other that, thing that makes it harder though yeah <laughs> this is it's like i can try try and describe it um how she looks like but she's like you know dark hair big sort of eyes it's 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 the, it's kind of hard because it's very generic um i'm thinking it might be did you see man up did you watch man up I did. Do you remember the date that Simon Pegg was meant to go on? Yes. In that movie. Yes. Do you know the wo- the woman I'm talking about then? Yes. I think, I think I her. Wait. Or at least somebody with that kind of like face type, basically. Um, I, I will try and, and find her. She doesn't actually have to be British because obviously she shouldn't be. Yeah. Um, uh, Ophelia Lovibond. Yes. And you know what? Yes, no, it is Ophelia Loverbond that I've been thinking of because the other thing I was thinking of was somebody with a similar face. It's still her, but it was her in elementary. Mm-hmm. And I forgot that there was the same person. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking somebody like her. Hmm, interesting. I have Just in terms of like visual vibe, you know? Yeah. Uh, I would say I could see Miss Abigail Breslin play Margot. Hmm. I think Abigail could be good. What's uh, she been in? She looks vaguely. She was in Little Miss Sunshine. 
Uh, Ashley, August. what's her last name? Abigail Breslin. Abigail, I just heard. Oh, yes. I just didn't recognize her from that picture. I know oh, exactly yeah. who you mean. Yep. Yeah? I could yeah. imagine her being Margot. Like, I you could know. see that. Uh, I think she's a great actress and she could bring uh, all the things that Margot needs. Um, so I think she, she could work. Or, um, I don't know if I, if I say her name correctly, mm -hmm. and Sophia Robb is also a good one. She was in Bridge to Terabitia. Uh, among many other things, uh, I think she, I she could be. Now I need to find out who you're talking about. Oh, and Sophia Rob. Yeah, yes. it's Anna Sophia Rob is, is actually Anna. her name. Okay, there you go. Anna Sophia Rob. So yeah, I could see that too. Yeah, I think these these two could be my first choices. Yeah, it just it somebody in that role needs to be a lot more sort of dark and mysterious than uh, I think um, they get they got with mm. Kara. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, and yeah. a little bit more angry as well. Oh, yes, yep, yeah. yeah. Um, she was too happy. <laughs> yeah, because the whole point is that she was fucking depressed as shit. Yeah, it wasn't. Um, it wasn't a happy story, like you it know, wasn't or... a happy story, and it was. A, yeah, it's a book that I love very, very dearly. Oh, I love, um, I love and I kind of, I do <laughs> in general, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> um, uh, and it's a book that I kind of wish had a better adaptation come out of it because I think that they did a better job adapting the fault in our stars oh my god yes um, oh my god <laughs> um just like not in not necessarily in terms of like what do you think about that book i just mean in technical terms they did a better job of actually mm. taking that book and putting it on screen i think they missed the point a little bit with with paper downs <sighs> yes yeah, um i have to agree I still, I, I'm not going to say I didn't enjoy the movie. No, I, I really did. liked the movie. I remember, remember seeing it and yeah. being like, yeah, I like this. But it was one of those things where I watched it and was like, yeah, I like this. And then afterwards I was like, hmm, actually, there were yeah. issues with that. And I know I knew I wasn't a fan of Cara Delevingne's casting as Margot, but I was willing to give it a chance. And I don't think she won the over in the role. I'm not going to, I, I'm going to be 100% honest. I don't mm. think she's a good actress in general. Like, I... Mm. I, I wouldn't really give her roles to be honest like you know I I, I remember watching almost back to back uh, Paper Towns and then Valerian uh, and it was both of them was just like a huge miss on her and like no I, I, I'm sorry darling I wonder if it's just a case of like and I, I think about this a lot ever since we kind of I, we did like a module about this a little bit in um when I was in film school mm -hmm. um my old film tutor, <laughs> very stubborn man who thinks that all of his opinions about film are correct. Oh, gotcha. But he basically posited the idea that um, there's no, like, there are just some roles that shouldn't be cast for some people. Um, there's no, the, the, I think it was what he said was there were no bad actors. There were just, there's just bad casting. Yes. I have to. Um, uh, so agree it's one to of those. Point. Yeah. And it's like, with the right director, the right casting, mm -hmm. a certain actor can do an incredibly good job. Fair. Um, and I think I, I'd wonder if maybe Cara Delevingne is one of those people who needs a very specific kind of director and a very specific kind of role that actually suits her better. Mm. Um, I don't know. These are just things I, I, I'm, I'm curious about because it's not like I, I, I'm like, no, she's failed. Fuck off. <laughs> 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 Would never be like that. Um yeah, it just it's, it's one of those things that I I think about because I I think about I think about Jim Carrey having having the career that he did and then doing Eternal Sunshine. Yes, and it's like nobody would have thought to put him in that role, mm. but and it worked um, perfectly. Yeah, it's like um, it's a, it's a Charlie Kaufman movie, right? I'm not making that I think, up. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Charlie Kaufman saw something in him, was able to direct him in such a way that he's not, you know, being yeah. Jim Carrey in the way that I think people um, associate him with being. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, there's a, there's a thing about like, you can put actors that you don't expect to be cast in certain roles in certain roles as long as you recognize mm. and direct them properly. I yeah. Is the other thing. I think especially with big actors... Um, when they kind of decide, if somebody decides, oh, I think they, they might be interesting in this like very different role, and then get 
freaked out about having to direct a really big actor. And it's like, oh. no, 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 you please just direct. You gotta <laughs> actually do the the other part of it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, interesting. I oh, someone popped into mind. Uh, oh, Anya Taylor Joy. Yeah, you know what? Yes, I think <laughs> Anya Taylor Joy could actually have. Done, I mean, obviously, this was. I think more if you like made it today. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think Annie Taylor Joy could have done like a really good job. Yeah, I actually I like that a lot. Actually, yeah. I I think she would work, especially like you know now watching the Queen's Gambit, uh, New Mutants because it, uh, she is also in the New Mutants. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, um, Last Night in Soho is coming out soon, oh, and fuck yeah. and and just seeing her in the trailer and and uh, you know watching her in these amazing roles she did. But- she has to have the right hair. Oh, <laughs> Otherwise, I'll be annoyed again. <laughs> obviously, obviously, but I think she she could nail it like easily. Yeah, easily. like you know, I I could. I think yeah. I agree with you there. No, because yeah. I actually I liked Nat Wolf in the roles oh, of Clinton. Yes. I think he did really really. Good. I actually like really liked everybody in the roles that they had in that in that mm-hmm. movie. It was just she didn't hit the right spot for me. Uh, did Kara? Yeah, in uh, I'm trying to remember the guy who played um. His best friend. I also can't remember the name of his best friend. <laughs> it's I mean, been a. Can you tell it's been a while since I've actually really, really been paid attention to this book. Um, completely fair. I'm. I, I, Justice can't... Smith. Right. I knew there, that. There it is. Marcus Justice Link, Smith. Lincoln, yeah. I did not remember that whole stage within this movie. Oh. That's very funny. That me neither. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I like Justice Smith though. I, I think he's great. Yeah, he's very good. <laughs> he's great. Uh, hmm. it, I mean, I kind of saw this coming because we already uh, mentioned it once. So I was like, I am. I I was almost hundred percent sure you're gonna mention this movie. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I could just because I was. I've been thinking about it for the past couple of days, and that's that's the one that comes to mind vividly yeah. for me. I mean, it's um, fair. It's a fair point. And, um, yeah, nothing else really pops in. I'm sure that, that there are definitely other things that I've looked at and gone, needs better casting. But it's like it's hard. To, it's hard to recast movies that aren't based on stuff yeah. because you're kind of going when you're basing things on stuff. Um, you already have an expectation of who you want that person to be. Yeah. But if you're going into something blind, it's, it's you, you can't really work at a movie that you have no you know previous knowledge of like there's no you're not bringing any previous like stuff to and you're gonna go do you know what i don't think this person was right for this role yeah. I, I think that's a lot harder to, to kind of come up with um although i did just think of something else but the movie hasn't come out yet and i don't think i don't know if that's technically fair no you can say it i mean mark Wahlberg as sully no oh god no that's like for me. That's already a. a we, yeah, I think pretty much everyone was just like, why? Just why? I mean, uh, have you seen the fan film uh, that they? Made oh the, yeah, the I mean, Nathan Fillion. Yeah, the Nathan Fillion was brilliant. Yeah, I mean, you had a perfect solid there. I'm not gonna lie, I I really liked. I know it's. I have to check his name. Uh, mm. One second. I will say I don't think I like. I didn't. Um, I wasn't huge on the Elena in that no, fan film, no, though. No, 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 definitely not. I mean, obviously, Nathan Lee was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously. Uh, Stephen Lang, there you go. Stephen Lang was a perfect Sully in there. Uh, you could have rolled with him. I think the worry was that... I don't... I say the worry. The, I think the worry is that because it, it's like a younger Nathan, you'd want a younger actor because obviously Scully... Ha- Scully? Scully? I was watching Brooklyn Nine Nine today. Can you tell? <laughs> Sully, um, you know, is in his life for a long period of time. So if he's already oh, yeah. quite old, he has to. I mean, not that like Sully really seems to to grow too old over the course of the games. Yeah, yeah he seems yeah. to. He's kind of got that Dumbledore esque quality to him, where he's like he's he's always old. <laughs> he's like um, Steve Martin. Yeah. Do you know? He's like Steve well, Martin. Consider this. <laughs> Steve Martin. Do you Sully? think Steve Martin could do a good Sully? 100%. I am sure. I, I love Steve to Martin. To be fair, I think Steve Martin could probably do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I could fucking roll with that. Um, 
actually speaking of steve martin have you yeah. seen the trailer for that thing that he's doing that's going to be on disney plus soon no it's a it's like a murder mystery show where he and oh! um um i think it's martin i think it's martin short I, I mean, it would make sense. They are friends. It's like it's like a proper murder mystery. It's like these two old guys decide there's been a murder in their apartment <gasps> block and they decide to make a podcast, like a true crime podcast about yeah. them trying to solve the murder within the apartment block. It looks great. Yes. Very silly. And I'm like, I'm into this as like, yeah. because it was like being advertised. It was one of those things that's going to be on Star. So I imagine it might be on other things in other countries. I don't know. Nice, nice, nice. Because I think Star is just a like a us regional thing probably um because a lot of the stuff that comes up on star is actually on hulu in the us so i don't mm -hmm. i don't know the top of my head but it looks very fun i can't, I can't remember the name of it now um i'm gonna look it up um Me too. i love them I, I i need that in my life and i love the concept uh, uh, steve martin. martin there you are steve martin i'm going to for <laughs> just thinking about how good the Pink Panther movie was. Oh my god, Amber Sure. Uh, come on, why is it not like the first thing that's come up? Yeah, it's weird. Are you watching it on an IMDb? Um, I just thought it would come up when I googled his name. To be honest, ah. because I thought maybe like a news article would come up about it, but no, no. it's not uh, gonna come up. It just it looked very fun. I what? Why did IMDb re redesign their entire fucking website? I don't know. I don't know. Everyone is redesigning things and it's annoying. Only murders in the building is what it's called. Only murders in the building. Okay. I already like that. Uh, it's also got... Um, yeah, hang on. Do, do, do. Where's the cast? Why has the cast the first thing? Uh, yes, it is Martin Short. Steve Martin, Martin Short, and uh, Selena Gomez is the other one. Yay! Um, and then there's like other people in there as well, but they're like the main three nice. that. I like uh, that. And it just, it looks, yeah, like I said, it looks very silly and fun. So I, I'm excited for that one. Anyway, mm. you've got some stuff, I assume, because you came up with this concept. <laughs> 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 well, I have the funny answer. Okay. First and foremost. Whatever movie it is, just replace the main character with Nicolas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> Insert clip of of um, Abed doing his insane Nicolas Cage run from Community. <laughs> just do it. Just do it. Yeah. Uh, I I will also point out that I think Nicolas Cage just made his best movie ever, and I highly recommend it to to everyone. It's called Pig, mm. and it was. I've been fantastic. hearing a lot of good things about that. It was fantastic, and he was fantastic in it, and and I just I want to watch it again. Uh, I I can't recommend it enough. Um, and you know I I think the reason many people like I, one of my favorite YouTubers, uh, Abyss the Alien, loves Nicolas Cage, and and I think the reason many love uh, many people love him is because he just goes for it. He just yeah. doesn't care. He he just want to make movies, and even if they shit, he's gonna do it, and he's gonna go batch it on them. <laughs> I just <laughs> I am like yeah, you know what? It works. Like you know you. You are doing what you like to do. <laughs> you even get paid for it. <laughs> so why the fuck not? Uh, so yeah, just replace everyone with, with Nicolas Cage and, and you're good. <laughs> it's being John Malkovich, but it's being Nicolas Cage. In exactly. Exactly. It's just perfect. Uh, you know, that uh, it was this uh, Matt Damon interview that um, was uh, picked up in not a positive way because it was basically like uh, you know you don't need Robert Downey Jr. to be Iron Man because anyone else could play Iron Man and I'm like I mean not anyone else I mean here's the thing about that <laughs> yes technically I feel like you could get a lot of people in and they could do I mean, a reasonable job yeah. with Iron Man but the thing with Robert Downey Jr. being cast as, as, as Iron Man was yeah. that it like it was a it was a casting that at the time was a bit like oh what were you talking about you can't cast the guy that got um you know was in prison for a bunch of drug related charges mm -hmm. and had like a, a terrible addiction issues and, and all this sort of stuff he had like this revitalized his career and the casting of him in the first place was like insane yeah and i think i think people now forget that yeah oh definitely uh, that at the time it was a bit like no you can't be cussing and it's like no 
Nobody else could have. No. Really, like, and it, it wouldn't have been the same. Mm-mm. We wouldn't have had the same trajectory uh, as as we as we did. I have to agree on that, and I and I have to agree with that. You know, like they, people just keep forgetting about that. Mm. Uh, they shouldn't. Like you know, I um, I think Robert Downey Jr.'s story is extraordinary. Like uh, you know, I I love many of his films that he he did before all these addiction things and and you know the prison and everything. Uh, and I I I already thought that he was great in those as well. One of my favorites mm. is is Hearts and uh, Hearts and Souls. Um, and uh, you know it's 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 such a lovely movie. I love that film so much. Um, and uh, I think once he came back and he got this chance with Iron Man, it's just it's like a new man uh, arrived back, and and I fucking love that for him. I I am like yeah, more people should do, you know it's I think it's it's a, it's a very good example how he turned his life around and. Mm. You know, I I really like it, and you know, whoever said that, fuck you. <laughs> you can't replace Robert. <laughs> I just I'm not I'm not accepting that. Um, uh, oh yes, so my yes, real I, answers, please. Yes, real answers, <laughs> real answers. I'm I'm on it. I'm on it. Um, so, ha. Huh. I don't like this actor. And. It's going to be a bit weird because I actually, it's one of his roles that I actually enjoyed. Uh, but I still want to replace him. And it's Tom Cruise in Edge of Tomorrow. <laughs> no, I have to disagree with you on this. <laughs> and we've had this discussion before. <laughs> I know. But I, Where I think this is actually one of like the best, like the best examples of him actually. Like he's, like, he's good in this movie. <laughs> That that's that's why I'm like I'm I mean even I am a bit like confused <laughs> by it, but uh, at the same time I would say that I could I, I I could imagine someone else being put in there and and maybe doing an even better job uh, for me like you know I. I, I will admit that he is he's def- it's definitely one of his best roles I'm I'm not gonna say it isn't uh, but I I. I'm I'm not gonna lie. I kind of want to see Chris Hemsworth doing it. <laughs> I think. I mean, technically, yes. I feel like you're right in that you could get a very good movie out of that. Thing mm. is, I already know that Chris Hemsworth can do that. Yeah. I think what it's, that I like about Tom Cruise in that movie is mm. the kind of meta like level to it. In that you kind of expect him to be Tom Cruise. Yes. Uh, but he doesn't like he the, the the thing that makes I think Edge of Tomorrow really fun and interesting is that you're watching this Tom Cruise type character who's not actually Tom Cruise. Yeah, he's a very he's a he's a coward. He's a oh, he's yeah, a little, he, he's terrible and like he he's a little sort of and he gets to be very funny and all of these sorts of stuff that you I think we have gotten very used to him not being in mm. movies. Mm. So I think I think a big part of the reason that watching that um, character arc is so fun is that you're kind of you're actually getting to watch him have a character, arc. <laughs> <laughs> and at least that's the thing that I found to be one of the most enjoyable parts. Like the movie, obviously in concept and everything, it, it already works very well. Yeah, yeah but yeah. I think the fact that he it is him kind of going through that character arc makes it a bit for me. Mm. And so I-, I think yes, technically. Chris Hemsworth could, could do something very similar, but I also feel like he's already capable of doing that. Yeah, so it wouldn't there wouldn't be as much satisfaction out of him becoming that at the end of it for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know you're right, but like you know, I hmm. you just like to see it. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I think it's 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 just because you know people realize that Chris Hemsworth is funny and Thor Ragnarok, and you know it's fair. Uh, but uh, I, I kind of always saw it in him, <laughs> like, and, and I think he could make this role into even more funny. <laughs> I mean, don't get me I, wrong, I, I, I love seeing Tom Cruise die, but <laughs> like multiple times, <laughs> multiple different ways. <laughs> She's like, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but like, 
I kind of, I, I kind of want to see Chris Hemsworth do it. I don't know why. I just, I just want to see it. <laughs> I think I he so. would be great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's one of those things where it's like when you start pulling these things apart, you kind of innately change the meta text of them. Yeah. Where it's like you can the idea is to to make a thing better right yes, if, yeah. you, if it, with, with it with a change in casting so when it comes to something like that it kind of feels like well why would you because then it feels like an entirely different movie to me is it yeah because i feel like the vibe changes immediately if, it, if it's chris Hemsworth. yeah because like you because it's that thing of like when it comes to star theory we are we bring in expectations of who we think certain actors are going to be on screen it's why yeah, people yeah, get typecast yeah. so easily um and it also will it you innately get taken out of a movie mm. when you recognize the people that are in it yeah that's why when when characters can go in and you're literally like i forgot that i was watching this person they're kind of like gold dust mm. um uh so if think if you immediately by changing that i think you you change the fabric of that film mm-hmm. the vibe and innately because i think i think chris hemsworth version of funny is a lot sillier than I mean, the yeah. version and i i don't think that movie needs to be silly okay five five yeah no, I, it's it, it's like it's like yes i can see your point here but i also don't think yeah it's it's an interesting thought experiment <laughs> I just like to see Chris Hemsworth do more funny roles because he's actually great. I think funny he's... roles in good movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he's, he's he's you know like he's such a funny guy. Like you can tell from interviews, and uh, the, uh, I think it's you know he's often put uh, behind this very masculine, very hero like roles, and uh, I think he's just way more than that. And and I would love to see it happen. <laughs> for him yeah. uh and and i think edge of tomorrow could give a, something to that like <laughs> edge of you know. tomorrow live i repeat yep <laughs> whatever you want to fucking call it uh i just i just stick with edge of tomorrow i like yeah no to be fair, i just can't i feel like there's like three of them and i can't remember what the other one is at this point oh fair fair fair, fair. um yeah that's that's one that I was like, yeah, you know, I still, I'm, I'm still gonna say it. That it is actually one of the few things that I, I like from Tom, Tom Cruise. So you know, it's just, it's just for my own satisfaction. Let's, <laughs> let's put it like this. I, like, you know, I would like to see Chris Hemsworth in more funny roles. Um, oh right, that's it. Was originally called All You Need Is a Kill. That was what the the oh, um, Jesus Christ the screenplay. It was it was. Um, I'm glad the screenplay adapted one. from the 2004 Japanese light novel All You Need Is Kill. Oh. Okay. It was it was the it was movie the movie was marketed as Edge of Tomorrow, marketed as Live I Repeat Edge of Tomorrow on home media or simply Live I Repeat. <laughs> Imagine Edge. just sort of fucking up that much in terms of like your <laughs> like title marketing. <laughs> uh, they went a bit overboard. They went a bit yeah. overboard. Like, uh, like I did think of like if we just go back a little bit for a yes. second. Yes. Haley Steinfeld for Margot. For Margot. Oh. Uh, what do you think? I like Haley. Uh, I think she could work, but uh, do you think she's too? This here's, here's where I second guess myself. Do you think she's too main character material? I, I think so. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. Think so. I was just kind of thinking because it suddenly popped into my head, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking of her as well. I'm not gonna say I didn't, but uh, yeah, she's just like, hmm. One of those two, like entirely, almost too charismatic in that you, yeah, you, you miss her too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It was just curiosity. Do you have another one? I am. I am thinking like uh, you know. There's there's the uh, uh, without men- mentioning the obvious reason for it, but uh, I think they should have cast originally Amelia Clark for Aquaman and and playing Mira uh, instead of yeah. that <clears throat> person garbage. Uh, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, she she probably. I haven't seen Aquaman and and don't. Uh, Really? No, you're not missing. Uh, out. Two. You're not missing. <laughs> Sorry, out. Jason Momoa. Sorry, Jason. Uh, it's not. I mean, I'm not gonna say it's bad. It's it's actually one of the more decent DC movies as well. Yeah, it's just I have no interest in it. It's but yeah, but uh, I I will say that uh, if you don't watch it, you're not gonna miss out on anything. Uh, to be honest, but uh, if if anything could make that movie better is that 
if you sh you guys should have put Amelia Clark in there from the beginning. Like we already know that uh, she works really great with Jason. Uh, mm. I think uh, she could have nailed that role. Like he made it. She could have made that role even more charismatic and and even more fun. I would even even say that. Uh, so you know, I I think that that was just bad casting uh, from the beginning, and you know, not looking at what happened ever since. It's so just, it's no. Warner Brothers technically, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah. Well, are we surprised? <laughs> no. No. Warner Brothers really likes to double down on these things, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm like, yeah. Um, and then if if we would go into the more serious stuff, uh, like, uh, I don't know, <laughs> casting um, uh, freaking, uh, what's her name? Uh, Kate Mara for Tiger Lily in Pan. Uh, oh. <laughs> I forgot about that one, Jesus. Just. Uh, oh. <sighs> no. No. Just. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying she's she's not a good actress. No, I love it's, Kate Mara. It's yeah. just, it, again, it's one of those things. It's like fucking Scarlett Johansson taking on um, the character in Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. That should never have happened. Nope. Nope. Like, uh, you know, just uh, maybe cast someone who's... who's... Also, hey, um, actors, it is also your responsibility it to is. turn it down is. roles when you know you shouldn't be taking them. Yeah. I know it brings you money and all that, but like, you, do you really need that money? You also don't. It, it's like Emma Stone playing a, a Hawaiian woman in oh her car. It's like, please don't do this. Oh stop! Stop this! Stop all of this! Just stop it! Just uh, you know, I'm. Uh, we don't even have to say specific uh, people uh, who could have played that role easily and even much better. Uh, it's it's one of those things where it's like you want you want Hollywood to actually start casting outside of the people that are going to bring money in, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, yes, I understand that you want to have names in so that you bring in people, you know, via, that's the whole concept of Star Theory. You, you hire um, actors that are recognisable because people will go to see those movies because of those actors, right? Yep. And yes, it does work, but in, it's like, you don't open up an industry properly unless you start hiring outside of those spaces. Mm -hmm. I mean... And I feel like it happening more. I feel like there's more and more, like, breakout star stuff that you you know coming out but it's not it's not good enough i mean to be fair that's why i like marvel uh among many other things uh they yeah obviously... they have launched a lot of people's careers yeah yeah like you know just to mention a few tommy Wilson. yeah <laughs> Just, just to mention that. The but to be fair, I would, I would credit that to Kenneth Branagh. That I wouldn't credit that to Marvel. Well, yeah, obviously, but uh, they also had to, you know, give a thumbs up to. True, but it was like Kenneth Branagh was the reason that he got put. He was kind of brought onto the project in the first place. So it's like, it's that thing of like, I. So this has post been going around on Tumblr recently that I really appreciate, and it's about. Um, there's been a lot of talk about um, there's a there's a show on Cartoon Network at the moment called The Owl House I think mm -hmm. is that what it's called I think actually so. I haven't watched it but like apparently it's got a lot of really great LGBTQ like representation stuff yeah. like textually as opposed to subtextually yeah and there's been a lot of I think there's been a sort of generation of people who haven't quite realised just how much certain creators had to fight to be able to put things on mm -hmm. screen mm -hmm. like um, basically everything like the 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 Marceline and Bub um Princess Bubblegum is that her name I, I haven't actually seen all of her yes. but... yeah. I mean, it was one of those things I was like I'm saying it and I was like wait is that correct yes that's correct um the case that they had at the end of Adventure Time that was only because the show was ending because they were gonna if they tried to do that any earlier they would have gotten cancelled and like basically everything Rebecca Sugar did with with Steven Universe and mm. how they had to make that subtext because yeah. they made it text they would have been taken off the air. It's that sort of thing where it's like, if we start giving credit to, I nearly forgot my point then. Um, <laughs> if we start giving these sort of like leaps forward in representation on, on television or in movies to yeah. the studios, when they were the ones who were gatekeeping it in the first place, we ignore the struggles of the actual creators who fought to get those things put on screen in, in the first place. Yeah, so yeah. it's like, yeah, I, I have, you have to give, you 
no, I don't really want to give credit to Marvel for for a certain like casting bits and pieces because at the same time they were kind of the reasons that they weren't happening in the first place. Yeah, and they're those that like you, you want to give it to the people who actually fought for those decisions, like the individual people as opposed to the company, right? Mm, mm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I also it, just as a like side note, as kind of related side note, I was thinking about when you were mentioning Marvel. I was thinking about how, and I have to, you know, what, I'm gonna look up his name because otherwise I'm gonna be an asshole. But I was, I didn't realize that the guy who's directing Shang Chi, yes, was the guy who directed um short term 12 which i've mentioned many oh, times yeah, is yeah, one yeah, of my yeah. favorite it's what up there is one of my favorite films um i think his name is it's like james hang on, short term uh but it was i read a whole article about him and, and especially um simu um uh destin daniel cretton yeah Destin, mm. Dest, destin daniel cretton um i didn't realize that he was the one who was directing it which kind of like bumped my excitement up for like nice. more of this stuff yeah i was like yeah he's, he's great i was like <laughs> i mean he is great uh, he's great yeah just as, as a side note i'm, I'm very that movie looks very exciting and i'm yes. excited for it yes although uh you know now with uh i don't know why they push back venom i don't yeah that's i think that's a sony thing that rather than because you know is this a sony yeah property? i'm sorry i just felt like it I just don't felt get like, it i feel like Hell, so it's definitely traveling. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, I don't know. I just want to see Venom. I think I need to watch Venom again. I, oh God, yes. I haven't watched it since I watched it the first time, but I want to remember how bad shit it is. You haven't? Oh my God, I just watched it like, I don't know, a month ago. And... I've been thinking about it. It's been, you know, I don't watch. <laughs> Considering this is a film and TV podcast, I don't actually watch movies that often. <laughs> Don't don't admit that, Katie. You know, just... I I this is I did this on the first day of my film school, right? They were like, um, so you need to tell a fact about yourself, and I was like, okay, I actually am not huge into films. My thing is TV shows, <laughs> and they were like, why are you here? And I'm like, it's the same process. I mean, yeah. Um, I do have another thought, though. Please go. Uh, <sighs> Wow. <laughs> Big sigh. Uh, I, you know, it's it's never going to happen now. Uh, mm -hmm. I, will, I will say this, but uh, uh, those who are loving Lord of the Rings the way I love Lord of the Rings mm -hmm. know that uh, uh, Sir Christopher Lee uh, originally wanted to play Gandalf. Interesting. And... Uh, I what I would do if I could is that I would have Sir Christopher Lee play Gandalf and uh, you want to swap them and and I would put Sir Ian McKellen to play Saruman yep interesting yep I don't know enough about the source material for Lord of the Rings <laughs> to be able to dispute this fact <laughs> or like this concept uh... I mean, don't get me wrong. I think uh, uh, Peter Jackson made a good call when he said that, you know, uh, Christopher Lee is just going to be awesome uh, as, as Saruman and, and he's, he's going to do a great job. Uh, and he did. Like, obviously, he's, he's iconic. But uh, I I've, I kind of would like to see what would happen if it, if it would be the other way around so this comes from a place of more curiosity than like it's, this should have been this yes yes because gotcha. uh, uh, i you know i i i kind i know that it was his dream to play gandalf and i i would like to give that to him <laughs> it, I, you know it's uh. like and i i would be actually interested to see because you know obviously he's, he's so He's so great as Saruman, and he's he's uh, you know he's bringing so much more to the character that uh, it's already there uh, that it's hard to imagine how he would be as Gandalf uh, because at the same time Surya Macklin is is just the perfect choice for Gandalf. So I'm like, while I I can see it happening, I am also like, would it work? Like is is this something that could actually work or or mm. i mean they are great freaking actors like freaking legends uh but i i 
I don't know if it could, and I would like to see if it would. Just yeah, no, yeah, that's curious. Yeah, and that would be I would be very much interested. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, otherwise I only have funny things like you know, like how would it look like if I don't know Johnny Depp played uh, the Mandalorian. <laughs> Do you know, uh, I do have a thing, and maybe you might get on me about this. And okay. it's actually, you know what? It's got nothing to do with... Wait. <laughs> so, okay. I, I feel like I have to preface a bunch of things in this. Okay. Uh, the Fantastic Beast movies are already kind of garbage. Um, I mean, I, I, I think we that kind of I, know this. I, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed the first one. I will say Yeah, this. I think a lot of us did. But also, J.K. Rowling can go fuck herself. Oh, obviously. Um, uh, and I think we can all say that. And actually, my thought about this casting has really nothing to do with Johnny Depp so much. Okay. I just think Colin Farrell would have done a better job I have as Grindelwald. I have to. And I just, I'd like, come on. Yeah. I didn't really understand that choice, to be it, honest. Yeah, it, it's like, he did such a good, like, he's genuinely a he great, was, he was great character in yeah. that first one. And then they were like, surprise. It's, and it's I was like, oh. but like, but Colin Farrell was right there. Yeah. You, you had, had you had Colin there. Come on. I know. I, I, you know what? I have to, I have to agree. I have yeah. to agree. I think what I would have done is I would have swapped that. Like, let's start with Johnny Depp and maybe swap to Colin Farrell. If Couldn't you really want to do that swapping thing. Like you know, if if that's really your thing, then then I I, I would have done that. Uh, otherwise, just just keep Colin Farrell. Maybe I I love Johnny. I I think Johnny is great, uh, but uh, he's just not too great as Grindelwald. Those movies just frustrate me as a concept now. Anyway, I mean, uh, like I liked the first one fine, and then like stuff happened, and then it was like I didn't even watch the second one, but it was like oh they're doing the story of Dumbledore and Grindelwald. Now you have the opportunity to. Like, and this was before, um, you know, J.K. Rowling actually outed herself as being a massive fucking turf oh, and yes. like hugely gender, gender critical. Yes. Um, uh, it was kind of like, you have now the opportunity to make this thing that you actually made subtext and then you kind of said after the fact, yes. text. Yeah. And then she fucking didn't. I and it's like, oh, now, now I'm looking and I'm like, no fucking wonder, right? Yeah. Um, but it's like you had the opportunity to make this relationship very explicitly gay and you decided not to do that. Yep. Go fuck yourself. Yep. Yep. Just it makes me so angry. I know. I, I feel you. I feel you. Um, <clears throat> but uh, it's no longer like after what we found out, it's not surprising. Like that, that third movie is never going to get like, nope. no. No. Like it's going to get made, but it's going to do so badly. Yep. Uh, I will uh, before we. Uh. <sighs> <laughs> it's really hot. It's I'm not gonna lie. Hello. It's, it's it's really hot. Ah! Uh. Uh. Oh my god! Hello! Hello! Look who it is! I'm here. It was really me. You <laughs> along. I've been here the whole time. I've been here the whole time. It was That's really gay for... all along. <laughs> uh, I was uh, there's um. Uh, one of the shows I watch and drop out was called Game Changer and the host does that at the beginning of every episode he goes and me I've been here the whole time yes shout out to Sam Rice who I love very dearly oh you are in the void you're fully in the void I am in the void (laughs) it's kind of scary I don't I like it yeah but it looks cool I look Hmm. cool today Uh, or tonight I should say Um, look at the difference it's so bright in here <laughs> and i'm only just an hour ahead i love it it's fun fun times uh before we say our bye eyes mm-hmm. of, of this episode uh i had a recommendation which was pig but i already spoiled that so watch pig please okay it's excellent it's it's excellent, excellent. i had heard good things Yes, yes. It, they all true. They all true. And the other very exciting thing is I am watching Free Guy on Monday. Ah. And I am like, you know, I, 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 I always have this thing with Ryan Reynolds movies that mm. I absolutely love Ryan. Like, you know, he's, he's fucking great. Uh, but I am always a bit scared because 
the reviews for his movies other than that yeah and it's it's just it's one of those things where he's he's got a he's got a he's got us it's, it's that kind of comedy that rides a line where it's like yes he's very funny yep. but sometimes the movies that he makes are not very funny yeah i'm I, the thing about free guy is that i remember watching the trailer and being like this could be terrible but had... all the reviews for it seem very positive. Yeah, very positive. Very... So I am very happy to see Rotten Tomatoes and everything because everyone is like, oh, this is great. Mm. So I am very excited to watch it. And, uh, you know, I've been getting into more to watching uh, Mr. Jack Septicai as well. Mm. And he's in it. Mm. And I'm like, I just discovered their interview that they did together like two years ago oh yeah i remember that yeah i watched that <laughs> and i love how it immediately starts with uh, uh ryan asking is this the nolan north version and i'm like <laughs> yeah it was one of those things where it's like oh this guy he knows he knows <laughs> he knows <laughs> i was so i was like a giggling child i was like ah! Oh, yes, it is. There's, I, I saw Ryan Reynolds trending on Twitter like yesterday, and yeah. I was like, "Oh, what's Ryan Reynolds done?" It was because he'd done some kind of interview with some K-pop star. I don't know who it was because oh. I don't know anything about K-pop. But like the guy, he, he kept like being really effusive and excited back at the person that he was doing <laughs> the interview with. And it seemed like I all the K-pop stands were like very happy that like he Obviously. loved him as much as these guys. Were, like... But I don't, I don't know anything about. I'm sorry. Okay. You know, yeah, I'm gonna put myself on the viral line here. Hi, BTS fans. I listened to um, half of Danger. Is that the really popular one? Uh, Dynamite. Dynamite. That's it. I love Dynamite. I don't get it. I don't understand what it is. You see, I got bored halfway through the song and turned it off. <laughs> it just—it does nothing for me. I was just listening to it like this doesn't this is this feels corporate to me. That's that's what it, it feels like somebody made a pop song to be popular. But it's fun. Don't, no, I don't it's get fun. anything out of it. Like I and I only listened to it because it was on a it was on a it was it was a it was on a playlist. It was on a character playlist of some of the people in um uh, the critical role sort of side quest thing that they've been doing. Um and I was like I will listen to this playlist and I will listen to this song. And I just, it, I was on a walk. So it wasn't like I was doing anything else. And it was just sort of like, Meh. I got nothing. I'm sorry. I just, I don't, I don't get it. I'm glad you guys are having fun, but I don't understand the appeal. So it's all like, ah, when I listened to that, I just immediately like, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good day. It's Even if it's a shutting day, it's, it's, it's a good day today. So I'm like, yeah. I like yeah. dynamite. I like them. I, I like. I'm not like a big fan or anything, but I I do appreciate their music, and uh, you know, I I see I see why why they are popular because it's positive. It's you know, it's. I just it feels so marketed to me. Like it feels I mean, like purposefully manufactured. That's what, in a way that I can't not shut out. You know. And that's what K-pop is about. I did, yeah, and then I just don't think it's built for me. Then you know, it's I mean, you, you, can, like, you can find yeah. really good artists out there. Like uh, I, one of my favorites is is G Dragon, uh, who's who's great. Uh, I am not saying that I'm not discounting the entire K-pop genre. Oh, obvious, obviously, obvious enough, obvious enough. I haven't listened to enough of it to do that. <laughs> or, you know, I just it's one of those things where I was just sort of like, and this is, and it was one of those like, oh, I'm such an asshole for being this like. No. super just sort of like no we you know, just like I, I, things that's fine it, it, yeah it was just uh, i just i don't it's okay don't get it i don't get it <laughs> it's fine katie it is honestly uh but yeah but definitely watch korean movies because yeah korean movies are great and i just saw today i will share this okay this is great news i think it's gonna be a new movie i my korean is not good enough to understand the post <laughs> Translate it then. <laughs> I, I know, uh, but uh, my uh, the love of my life, Madong Sok, uh, just shared. Uh, I think it's it's gonna be a new movie of his, either a movie or a TV series. Mm. And uh, uh, if 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 I understood it correctly, it's like a it's like a de demon hunting uh, thing. And I don't know how much you will be able to see. It's a draw oh, of them. That's cool. It, yeah, I see. And he's 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 in the front. Yeah, I see that. Him. That's him. And I saw it. I was like, oh, 
so where, 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 I, where can I watch it? I need to watch it. <laughs> I just love this guy. <laughs> like, you know. He was, yeah, he was great in Train to Busan. Yes. I think we all know. And you guys will all see him soon in Eternals, and I can't wait. <laughs> I honestly can't wait <laughs> for him to arrive. But also, wait, I went out of focus. Come back. Oh. Come back. There she goes. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I know it was scary. It, I came out from the void. She came out from the void. <laughs> uh, watch Train to Busan. That's the message always and forever. Oh, now man. now Katie can approve as well. So. Yeah, it's, it's true. It's a good movie. Yeah. Uh, I have it on Blu-ray. Who <laughs> There you go. Uh, and watch Kingdom because Kingdom is great and we need season three uh, because otherwise I can't sleep. And no, I feel like I need to. You need to watch it. Mm. If if that was the sentence. Then no, I was going to say, now I feel like I need to bring up some things that I keep telling people to watch and now I can't think of anything uh, other than just like subscribe to drop out. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, they don't pay me. I just really like them. Oh my God. Uh, yes. We do... have a lot of great content. <laughs> do that. Uh, also, Katie, watch Kingdom, please. I need to talk about it more. Um, and I would need we to should, watch it again. We should do like a thing like soon think... where we like give something for the other person to watch and like make this your priority and then we talk about it properly yes because i really want you to watch the leftovers so i can talk about that in detail oh my god fine if you're watching them i watch the leftovers okay deal okay it's gonna be a two hour long episode then <laughs> what you do in the halves we'll do like we'll do like okay. like we did with the, the planet of the apes and the west wing episode that we did done deal i will start watching it to, to... I will oh. say, yes. It, it's one of those shows that I feel like you do need to give attention to. So don't feel bad if you want to take your time with it. Okay. Uh, and also because it's quite heavy in subject matter yeah. and like sort of vibe, you know, don't feel like you have to, to binge it. But it is good. And like, trust me, that I get, like, it's one of those shows that actually gets better as the seasons go on. I like most people who love Leftovers will all say that the first season was the weakest. And that's still excellent like television fair it's just uh, so beautiful fair 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 okay okay uh what should i say about kingdom just watch it all basically <laughs> just watch it subs uh, not dubs 100 <laughs> percent once again all right uh, oh, it's the, fair enough yeah you, 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 yes we're getting there and it uh it starts with a any tiny bit slow okay but even if it's slow it's still freaking interesting because i don't think you or me watch many pe uh, period dramas no are not playing particularly Korea, so as well on, on top of on top of uh, the fact that you're not really yeah. watching them it's very interesting and very intriguing to be fair so just keep an open mind and uh, okay. once it gets off it's like oh <laughs> i need more <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. That's it. Let's do it. Uh, all right. And this was today's episode. It, it, it was fun and great. And, you know, uh, all the. I don't know. What is this? Are we doing. I don't know. I'm just doing a thing. I'm just like, yeah, okay. we did the thing. Good job. We do this. Live long and prosper. <laughs> um, yeah. And take care. Get vaccinated. Yes. Uh, we need to go back uh, in the, in the uh, on the outside and do comic cons and movies and whatnot. Uh, I have concerts and stuff. I have so many tickets too. There so you go. Um, there you go. I need to buy plane tickets, and I still don't know if I can or if I should because I'm afraid that they're gonna cancel things. So please get vaccinated or wear a fucking mask. It's not that hard. Both. Uh, do both. both. Even if you're vaccinated, you still wear your still wear your mask. It's better that's, for everybody anyway. That's an even better option. I have hold. like three right here, and they're all critical role related because they're great. Oh, I, I well, mine is not here, but uh, I have uh, one. Oh my god, it it looks really freaky. <laughs> I'm the light. <laughs> uh, but uh, so I have one that is uh, it it has the Joker's mouth on it. Jesus, <laughs> I know. And I and I put it on, and and everyone is like, I I made a kid cry with it. It was fun. All right, bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a purpose. Or well, maybe it was. Uh, anyway, <laughs> take care, everyone. We Let's love be... you. Uh, yeah, you get a game on this. Bye, everybody. Bye.